Um, I understand that there's all kinds of coding and uh, geometrics that go with the pyramids, but according to the Andromedans, and this is something they've done in the past, and many other races do, when they find a planet that they want to inhabit it or colonize, and its wobble is so irregular that they can't build anything on it because they don't know 1,000 years to the next whether or not it's going to be destroyed, what they will do to balance the rotation, the orbit of the planet, is put weights on it, like we do with our car tire. These weights are the pyramids. They put them at strategic locations to balance the rotation. This is why the Great Pyramid of Giza is located exactly dead center of all the mass planet, uh, Earth mass on the planet. It's a weight. That's what it was originally designed to be, was a weight to balance our rotation. So it, they would have some semblance of order here, that they wouldn't have to worry about it flipping around and orbiting and pole shifting whenever it wanted to, or wobbling so much like this you know, that the oceans would just change. Any other questions? <clears throat> yes, sir? The uh, pyramids on Earth are uh, located in the same part of the hemisphere as the pyramids on Mars. Yes. Yes, it is. But there are more pyramids on the Earth than there are on Mars. There are a lot in the ocean. <clears throat> you know, Central America, we have a lot. Of course, it's you know almost one and a half times the land mass as well. Plus, we have water, which in itself is an incredible amount of weight. I think we have one one point two trillion miles square miles of water on the planet, which is phenomenal. You know, absolutely phenomenal. It's two thirds of the earth, and less and less than one percent is drinkable. <laughs> Another question. Somebody asked, yes, sir. Can you give us some back, some of your background and how you came into all this information, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. I guess it's time for that. Um, my contact started when I was eight years old. I was um, on a family picnic, picnic in Woodstock, Michigan, which is in the upper northern peninsula. Um, I did not remember the contact until I was eight, at the age of 14. Um, I knew, and my parents knew, that something had happened and the other folks. Uh, we went out to play hide-and-go-seek, and, go seek, and uh, the grass was very tall. It was in August. It was like the second or third week of August, just before we all went back to school. And uh, I went to lay down in the tall grass and just to hide, okay, because we had one of our little cousins, she was a, a female, you know, we made her red, so she had to go around and find us. And I remember picking up the chestnuts and throwing them because they were chestnuts. And I made a place for me to lay down. Well, I fell asleep. When I woke up, it was night. It was close to 9 o'clock. Now, in August, you know the sun sets late. So I got up and I walked back. I'm approximately 250, maybe 300 yards from, from the picnic area. There was a police car there. There was a dog in the back or a state police. I think it was a state trooper because the guy had the big round hat with the, the funny thing on the top. Um, when I got back, at first they were all glad to see me, and then my mother wallowed me. She gave me a spanking. Where have you been? And I said, well, I was over there. No, you weren't. We were all looking for you. So I took them back with flashlights to where I was, and sure enough, there was my imprint in the grass, and they swore up and down that they had been all through there, and I wasn't there. It wasn't until age 14 that I realized what had happened. And I was asleep. We were living in, in uh, Elk Grove Village, Illinois. And uh, I was asleep, and I woke up, and I'm lying on a table, flat on my back, and I'm looking up at this light. And there's a very tall, big guy standing next to me, and a short, tiny one. The tiny one had white skin, bald head, looked sort of oriental, but he wasn't, just very old. And the other guy, the big tall one, was light blue skinned, no hair, but built like a Greek god, like this. <coughs> I had instantaneous recognition of those two guys, two men. The tall one is Morinet. He's 2,300 years old in our time. He's from Andromeda. The short one was the same.